Hey, I'm Shane. Today I'm going to be talking about macro video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the different tips and techniques that I recommend when you're getting started to get the most consistent and in-focus footage. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about all things macro video. It's a topic that I've really <laughs> dived into over the last couple months when taking pictures of people hasn't really been an option, but has given me a great opportunity to really refine my macro setup. One thing I'm not gonna focus on in this video is a lot of the topics that overlap with macro photography, such as choosing the right focal length, depth of field, and a lot of the more nitty gritty details. I'm gonna save that for, for a whole nother video and I'll have a link to it in the video description, as well as as a card on screen right now. But without further ado, let's get into the video. The first topic that I'm gonna focus on is talking about the gear that you'll need. And fundamentally, the first thing that you'll need is a macro lens. Choosing the right macro lens is gonna depend on essentially the price. The best lenses that you can get often have lens stabilization, which is gonna help out a ton in getting more consistent video. However, this is often gonna be a pretty big barrier to entry. So when you're just getting started, you also have the option to use macro extension tubes. I also made a video on this topic, which I'll link on screen now, but basically they're just little extension tubes that you put between your camera and the lens in order to reduce the minimum focusing distance. This isn't gonna get you the best quality footage. However, when you're just getting started, it allows you to kind of dip your foot in the water. Besides the macro lens though, the most important thing is to have stable footage. And in order to do this, you have to make sure your camera is gonna be as stable as possible. And thankfully, there's a lot of ways to go about doing this. The easiest of which is to use a tripod. And actually, using a smaller tripod is often preferable because your subjects are usually very close to the ground and you wanna get as close to them as possible. So using a micro tripod or a gorilla tripod will actually be a very useful option. Another thing you can do is just use a bag filled with rice, sand, or beans. And this will allow you to just rest your lens on top of that in order to dampen a lot of the movements. It's a little bit of a pain to carry around, however, it goes a really long way with just kind of crushing all those micro shakes that your hands produce. A tripod is awesome for if your subject isn't moving, but if your subject is something that moves around or you want to introduce some movement into your shot naturally, you'll want to have a more portable setup. The easiest way to do this is to use a gimbal. You just put your camera on a gimbal and you're off to the races. The difficulty with this is you're gonna to have to rely on the autofocus of your camera, which I'll talk about later, but for macro video, autofocus is very difficult and unreliable. So you end up needing to use either a follow focus system in an external monitor, and it ends up becoming a lot more pieces of gear that you need and becomes a lot more cost inhibitive the more you dive into it. So a gimbal, at the surface is really handy for macro video, but actually using it can get a little bit more complicated. So what I often end up doing is simply using a handheld setup where you weigh the camera down. In order to weigh your camera down, you're gonna need something to attach to it. The easiest thing is just using a tripod. You leave your tripod attached to the tripod plate on the bottom of your camera, and this will shift the center of gravity lower to the ground and make your camera heavier. This will help dampen any sudden movements that you make passively and just result in smoother footage. The way that I prefer though is to put my camera into a cage. If you put your camera in a cage, you can attach a lot of different things to it, like an external monitor, a microphone, a new battery, and probably the most important, handles. If you have handles on the side of your camera, you can help extend your grip and basically just get better footage because you have a better grip on your camera. The last piece of kit that is gonna be really useful is a light. It doesn't have to be a big light because with macro photography, because your subjects are so small, a small light is gonna look pretty diffuse already just because of the size comparison. However, a larger light source is always gonna result in more natural and pleasing looking footage. So when you have the opportunity, it's awesome to use a bigger light. So if you're indoors, just make sure you remember that 
you're gonna need a whole heck of a lot of light in order to light up your subject enough to get good footage. So now that you have your camera set up, the next thing is figuring out how to get things in focus. And this is gonna depend on what you prefer. Using autofocus is gonna be actually really difficult. The reason for this is because when you're so close to your subject, Autofocus can be quite accurate for photography, but for video, it's gonna often result in pretty jittery looking footage. So it's best to optimize your camera with actually reducing the speed of your autofocus motors for macro. And if you have a focus limiter on the side of the lens, enable that to be at the minimum focusing distance, just so that it has less area to hunt in. This isn't gonna be perfect though, and it's often still gonna result in jittery and kind of unusable footage. So for this reason, I often just shoot in manual mode. Manual mode is very simple, and all you have to do is pull your focus. One thing that I recommend you use though is focus peaking if your camera supports it. Focus peaking is gonna allow you to see what's in focus by having the focus areas highlighted in red, and if you have an external monitor, this will actually help out a ton too because having a larger screen, as you know, makes it way easier to pull focus. So now let's talk about how to optimize your camera settings. The easiest way to get stable and smooth footage is to shoot in a higher frame rate and slow your footage down. For macro video, this also is super easy because your shooting subjects so small the movement of time is often kind of warped and people won't notice even when you have slowed down footage nearly as much as they would if say it were people moving. So that helps out a lot. So for the sake of example, I'm going to use 60 frames per second as kind of my sh uh, frame rate of choice. In terms of shutter speed, I'm going to still abide by the 180 degree rule and shoot at a shutter speed double of my frame rate. So I'll shoot at somewhere around 120 frames or shutter speed of 120. And this is gonna get me the most pleasing motion blur and result in the best looking footage. In terms of aperture and ISO, it's really gonna depend on your scene. And the most important thing though is to shoot at an aperture of a minimum of f5.6. This is gonna result in having your subject actually in focus because if you start creeping up to f4 and f2.8, your subject is just not gonna be in focus consistently for the video and it's not gonna be very pleasing. Your ISO is gonna to have to compensate. So if you have grainy footage, that's gonna be better than having footage that's out of focus. So it's unfortunate, but often you end up having to shoot at relatively high ISOs and it kind of is what it is unless you have enough external light. So being conscious of where the sun is and what your light source is will go a huge way in getting the best possible footage. So you have your settings nailed down, you have the gear all set up, what's next? It's time to get footage. If you made it this far into the video, I bet you already have something in mind that you wanna get video of, but if you're just learning and getting started, I'd recommend starting off with something that you're comfortable with. Something like food or coffee is very easy and because it's small and inside, you can take a lot of time with it. However, if you wanna jump right outside, I recommend getting some videos of maybe some flowers in a garden or some plants. These are gonna be much easier than jumping into wildlife because they're not moving and you can use a tripod much easier. However, once you wanna to progress to some animals, I do recommend taking it very slow. The most important thing that you wanna do when you're getting started especially, and even once you've been doing it for a while, is to get a lot of shots. Your hit rate is gonna be really low in terms of getting things in focus. Significantly lower than it would be even if you're doing things for regular videography. This is because when you're so close, your depth of field is so small that even if you think you got it in focus in camera, Assume you didn't and try getting a few dozen more shots before you actually call it quits on that subject. You'd rather go home and have a couple shots in focus than have none at all. So putting it all together though, just remember you want to have the most stable footage you can in order to get the highest hit rate for things being in focus. 
To do this, you can use a gimbal, tripod, or what I prefer is just weighing your camera down as much as possible in order to get some good handheld footage. Next up is make sure you remember to either light your subject or go out at a time of day when there's enough natural light in order to have even lighting on whatever you're getting video of. Macro video isn't a nighttime activity, unfortunately, when you're getting started. Lastly though, remember to have fun. Your hit rate at the start is going to be really small and you probably aren't going to get the best shots. So just keep at it. It's going to be frustrating, but over time you will get better and you will get more shots in focus. But that's it for the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments on anything I talked about or you have any insights that I missed, please feel free to comment below. I love talking, um, as you can tell by this video, and I try and respond to every uh, comment that there is. And if you enjoyed the video, maybe consider subscribing and liking the video. Anyways, thank you again for watching. I hope you have an awesome day and I'll see you in the next one.